If I were to ask you where you are currently at in your walk with God, what do you think your answer would be? If you were to sit down right now and to examine yourself, do you think that you could be able to say that you love God and that you are doing your best to do His will? That's what I want to talk about today. Second Corinthians thirteen five. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you failed the test. Thank you for coming to visit 100% Forgiven. It's April 24, 2019. I hope you are doing well, and I hope that you are benefited spiritually or in any way from this message today. So I want to talk about self-examination. The scripture I quoted is something that I think is very important and something I think that needs to be talk, talked about. Do we love God? As Christians, it's easy to get in the get caught up in the emotional highs and then when the emotional lows come, when the highs go away, it's like the end of the world and we don't seem to know what to do and sometimes we spend too long on the emotional lows um, and we stop seeking after God because we think that somehow the emotional lows and the struggles of our life define who we are, but that's not the case. Um, God loves us. But as Christians, we have been called to be disciples of Jesus, to be students of God, to be children of God. God is our Father and He wants to raise us up. He wants to build us up into being just like Him. That's one good thing about God we always need to remember. He doesn't want what is bad for us. The commandments that He gives to us is for, is for our good. It's never for our, for our punishment. He's never punishing us. He sees the good and He wants to give it to us as a gift. Even though we don't deserve it. That's one thing I think we always need to keep in mind as well. We don't deserve anything. Everything that we have, material possessions, our family, our friends, the food that we eat, the jobs that we have, the cars that we ride in, the air conditioning we enjoy in our car, all of that is a gift from God. Because we must remember that we all have sinned. And we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And it's such a great thing to know that God, even though our sins built up, were built up, they were stacked up against us, God saw right through those. And he saw Jesus dying on the cross. And that was for us. That is a gift as well. Salvation is always a gift that we must receive. So what I figured I wanted to do today is share a lesson with you that has been previously recorded a couple months back. It was more... I'd say about four or five months ago, a recorded lesson I've done. And I'd like to share that with you. And the title of the message is called Self-Examination Time. And it goes into um, questioning, you know, how often do we examine ourselves? And are, and are we taking our walk with God seriously? So I'd like to share that with you today. And I hope that you enjoy it. And after... And after the message, I'd like to come back and talk a little bit more. So, let's get to it. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you for letting me speak with you today about God's Word. I've been pretty eager to um, share this message with everyone. So, I'm glad that I had the opportunity, by God's grace, to, to share this today. The title of this message is called Self-Examination Time. Do you love Him? And of course, the one who we're talking about is, Do you love Jesus? You know, many of the qualities that the apostles had and the disciples had, um, some were imperfect, but Paul, he stressed so much on the necessity of loving Jesus. 
So during this lesson, I want us all to do three things. Number one, I want us to listen to what the Word has to say. As we listen to the Lord, I really want us to focus and listen on what He has to say. Number two, when we hear what the Lord has to say, let's think about what He has to say. Really let His words dwell in our minds. And number three, examine ourselves. After we listen to what the Lord has to say, after we think about what the Lord has to say, let's examine ourselves with what the Lord just said. So before we get into this lesson, I'd like to pray and pray with me. Our Father in Heaven, God, thank you for the opportunity to, to listen to your word, to grow more in understanding of your word. We pray, Father, that at this time we can all grow in a deeper knowledge of your word so it can fill our lives and we can bear fruit that will be profitable to your kingdom. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, his mother, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life, he can, he can not be my disciple. No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Luke fourteen twenty six through twenty seven, Luke nine sixty two, Matthew thirteen verses forty four to forty six, Matthew seven verses twenty two to twenty three. It's what we just read. We as Christians are called to love the Lord our God with all of our heart. We are called and even commanded to forsake all things for the Lord. That even means forsaking our own desires so that we can be conformed into the image of God's Son, our Lord Jesus. Jesus said that for those who are not willing to take up their own cross and follow Him every day, these people are not worthy to be His disciples. You know, at first, this may sound like a harsh thing to say, but let me ask you something. Do you and I really deserve anything from the Lord other than condemnation for the sins we committed? Jesus says that a person cannot be his disciple unless he hates his mother, his father, his siblings, his spouse, even his own children, even his own life. Now when Jesus says that a person must hate his family before he can be a follower of his, he's not talking about the way that God hates sin. This word hate mentioned here, actually in the Greek, means something different than what we're thinking it means. The Greek word for hate means to love less. So when Jesus uses this word hate in this passage, what he's really saying is, whoever does not love their family and their own life less than they love me cannot be my disciple. We as Christians are called and commanded to love our spouses, our parents, and our children, while yet keeping Jesus first and foremost as the Lord of our hearts and minds and letting Him direct our every decision in these relationships that we have with others. Jesus said that those who put their hand to the plow and look back, these people are not fit for the kingdom of God. Really dwell on that. Those who put their hand to the plow and look back, these people are not fit for the kingdom of God. God wants people who are serious, who are wholeheartedly seeking His kingdom, who are focused, who only have one purpose in life, and that is to grow and to live and to bring Him glory, to grow for Him and to live for Him. 
I'd like to quote Albert Barnes, a theologian, who once said concerning this verse, He that would enter heaven must come with a heart full of love to God, giving all into his hands and prepared always to give up all his property, his health, his friends, his body, his soul to God, when God demands him, or he cannot be a Christian. Religion is everything or nothing. He that is not willing to sacrifice everything for the cause of God is really willing to sacrifice nothing. Wow. That is very deep. Jesus also said that the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking pearls, who then when he found one of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. So far, I hope that you're seeing the relationship and the outlook that a Christian is supposed to have towards the gospel. The person who is a Christian has found the kingdom of God and will sell everything that he has to obtain it. I have to ask myself and including you, have you and I given up everything for the kingdom of God? Matthew 7 verse 22 is a very well-known verse among believers and even un among unbelievers. Jesus here says that many on the day of judgment will call him Lord, but yet Jesus will tell these people to get away from him. Why will he tell them this? Because he never knew them. That is why Jesus wants a personal relationship with his people. He doesn't want a casual every Sunday, every Wednesday type of relationship and then you pull him out of your pocket when you need him. Jesus wants to know you on an intimate and deep personal level. Calling ourselves Christians is not some casual title we should ever, you know, let come out of our mouth. And when you and I say that we are a Christian, we are saying the following. That we love Jesus more than we do our own parents, siblings, spouse, and children. We love Him even more than we love our own life. When we say we love Jesus, we're saying that we have traded all our desires and plans in this world in exchange for the kingdom of God. When we say we love Jesus, we are saying that we do not love our lives here on earth more than we love our relationship with Jesus himself. When we call ourselves a Christian, we are proclaiming to be a living and holy sacrifice, one that is acceptable to God. Romans 12, 1-3 Now comes our time for self-examination. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians thirteen five says, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do not do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test? Even though Paul was writing in a different context to the Corinthian Christians, this still does apply to us today. We as followers of Christ should always be examining ourselves on the good days and on the bad days. Paul says to examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. The word examine here and the Greek means to put oneself to the test. The following words, test yourselves, that come after this, means to prove yourself. Or testing yourself as a blacksmith tests his metal with fire. Examining ourselves is a good thing because it helps us see what areas we are lacking spirit, spiritual maturity in and what other areas we need to grow in. Therefore, here are some scriptures we can use to examine ourselves with. Colossians 4.2 Devote yourselves to prayer. I gotta ask, are you devoting yourself to prayer? How often do we talk with God? 1 John 2.15 Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I gotta ask, and I'm asking myself these questions just as much as, much as I'm asking you. Be honest with yourself. Do you love the things in this world? Anything. Even your TV, your video games, your school, college. More than you do prayer, talking with God, reading about God, studying His Word, and even fellowshipping with the church. Do things come before your spiritual relationship with God. John fifteen eight. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. 
Are you bearing any fruit for God's glory? Am I bearing any fruit for God's glory? Do forgiveness and kindness consume your heart, or does gossip and jealousy consume it? Romans ten seventeen. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Are you sharing your faith with unbelievers? Do you look at unbelievers as people who will die in their sin without Jesus as their Lord, or do you look at them just as a neighbor to wave to and to and to work with? You know, sharing my faith has always been a very a very scary thing. That's probably because of pride. Not really sure, but even though I have a desire burning within me to share the faith, to share the good news that everyone needs, sometimes it's a scary thing to do because we as humans, we don't want to be rejected. We want to be accepted and we don't want to stir anything up. My last point, Second Peter 3, verse 18, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Are you and I grown in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Are we taking the time out of our day to read God's Word? How many hours, I have to ask you and I have to ask myself, how many hours do we watch TV versus scrolling through Facebook posts? Take a second to think about how you did in this self-examination test. Just take a, take a second. How'd you do? Are you satisfied? Are you care? Are you are you caring about your about your situation? The truth is, we all have areas we need to grow in. And the truth is, we're all people who live in a body that wages war against our souls for the good that we want to do. We don't do, and the bad that we don't want to do, we do. Now, we are always at war with the flesh as Christians. However, we are still commanded to carry our cross. Is your cross heavy? Or are you even carrying one at all? Let me make something clear. I am not advocating a works-based salvation. Scripture is abundantly clear that our salvation from God is a gift, something that we cannot earn by keeping commandments. And to back that up, Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10, Galatians 2, 21, Titus 3, verses 5 through 7, and Romans 10 are just a couple proof texts that, again, defend this view. The point of the self-examination test was to help you evaluate your spiritual state. Did you find that you were, fa you were failing in some areas? If so, I think we're all in the same club. We're all broken and imperfect people striving to live for a holy and perfect God, right? Well, that is if we love Him, right? True salvation in Christ will inevitably lead to a changed life. The saved will be dedicated to their Savior. Quote, A true Christian will not feel comfortable living a life that doesn't submit to the Lord. Unquote. John fourteen twenty one, Jesus said, "Whoever keeps, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, is the one who loves me." So here's our answer for the message. If we love Jesus, how do we know we love Jesus? Jesus says, "Those who keeps his commandments." If we love him, we will keep his commandments. We will carry our cross, and we will love him above all things and above everyone. We will even give up our lives. Every day for the cause of Christ and won't look back. Being a Christian is no bed of roses. Some days are great, some days are horrible. But being a Christian is very, very serious and self-sacrificing. Now, what's more important than us loving Him?
We talked about us loving Him, the necessity to love Him. What's even more important? Him loving us. Somehow, somehow, God being rich in His mercy loved us so much that while we were His enemies, He sent Jesus to die for us, to live a perfect life, and to take our rightful place on the cross that we deserved when we chose to sin against Him. Jesus died, He was buried, and then He rose again from the grave on the third day for you and me. And now... He, he, Jesus Christ, offers eternal life as a gift to anyone who would trust Him for their salvation. He commends everywhere, commends men everywhere to repent of their sins and to turn to the living God. Are you in need of God's forgiveness? If so, I pray that you will come to Him and accept the gift that He is offering you that i hope you were edified and benefit by that lesson in some way i do have to say that after listening to this i did mess up in that lesson because i don't know if you caught it but i said how often do you view facebook compared to tv or tv compared to facebook (laughs) that's kind of that that was not what i meant what i meant to say was how often do you spend your time on facebook versus versus reading god's word Comparing how often you do other things um, with how often you do things, the things that God wants you to do. So that I hope that you were benefited by that. It's something that's near and dear to my heart because so often do I do I think of and I see other Christians who just kind of float and they don't really, you know, they don't. I don't. They don't really, they don't seem on fire for the Lord at all. And yeah, I get that way too. I get that way quite a bit. And there are days where I just, I just feel like giving up. But we must realize that the salvation that we have, I think that's really a big thing to understand for us. Because if we don't understand the gift, the treasure that we have, the eternal life that we have, even though that we say that we have eternal life. Do you do you do you understand that you have eternal life? I want you to dwell on that for a second. You as a Christian have eternal life. That means when you die, you live. As crazy as that sounds. Right now, it's not that you're going to have eternal life later on. No, you have it right now. Jesus said whoever believes in me has eternal life. Period. Do you believe in Jesus? Then you have eternal life. There's no questions asked. And of course, what is real belief? Because so many people can say, well, I believe in Jesus, and then they live completely against him. They live as an atheist, agnostic, Satan worshiper, and all that. That is not real faith. Real faith loves Jesus. Real faith gives their life for Jesus. Real faith is not a perfect faith. Real faith does not mean that you're not going to sin every once in a while. I mean, you still have sin within you, and don't ever let yourself think that you don't. Just because you're a Christian, because the Apostle John says that you do. Because if you tell yourself that you don't have sin, then you lie, and you actually make God a liar. So we don't want to do that. But if you're not a Christian, I'm telling you, man, Jesus will change your life. Give him a chance to do it. I'm not saying, hey, go to the nearest church down the road. I'm saying let him. Go to him. Go to Jesus, personally. Go to him in prayer and ask him for his help. I hope that you have been benefited by this message. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me by my Facebook page that's attached to my podcast. Or you can get to me on Twitter, uh, GaryJ765. Or you can get to me on Spotify. I am now on Spotify and Lord willing... I will be getting on iHeartRadio and iTunes here coming up. So I look forward to that, and I look forward to hearing feedback and hearing your thoughts and opinions and disagreements if you have any, because I want to always be able to keep this as an open as an open podcast to where you can ask questions, you can disagree, as long as we have the Bible in front of us and see what God has to say. So this is 100% forgiven, exalting truth no matter the cost. I hope that you have a blessed day today, April 24th, 2019. 
And I hope that you keep your focus on God. Test yourself. When you find yourself starting to slide away from the straight and narrow, by faith, living for Jesus, stop. Pray. Examine yourself. Ask God to help you. Especially those in college or about to go to college. My brother-in-law, he's about to go to college. College can be a very scary thing for a Christian. Because you're surrounded with temptation, with more of temptation than you are really when you're outside of, outside of college. So we need the strength of the Spirit. We need to be in God's Word. We need to be, we need to be talking with our Father. I'm a father. If my son didn't talk to me, you know how be torn I'd be? I think it's easy to not, not really realize how, how much God does love us and how much He puts up with us. So, it's my encouragement to you. Test yourself. Focus on Christ. Keep your focus on Him. Go through the sufferings. Ask God to give you strength to overcome whatever challenges in your life right now. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. And as I said, I hope that you have a blessed day.